Dear friends, I hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous mandibular second molar, which is the last tooth in our deciduous tooth morphology series. So what we are going to discuss in this brief video lecture, we are going to discuss the timeline of development of the deciduous mandibular second molar. We are going to discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems. And we will discuss the key identification features of the deciduous mandibular second molar. So watch this lecture till the end. So the timeline of development. So the mandibular uh, deciduous second molar, the calcification of this tooth, it begins around the age of 18 weeks. The crown, it is completed when the baby is 10 months old. The tooth, it emerged into the oral cavity by the age of 27 months. So the root of the mandibular deciduous second molar, it is completed by the age of three years. And the tooth, it is replaced by a process of exfoliation uh, around the age of 11 to 12 years when the mandibular second premolar, it emerged into the oral cavity. So what is the alphabet that is used for this tooth in the universal tooth notation system? So the universal tooth notation system, it begins with the right maxillary second molar with A and the alphabet, they continue in a clockwise direction. So for the mandibular second molar of the left side, the alphabet is, is K in the capital letter. Then the alphabet, they continue in a clockwise direction. And for the right mandibular second molar, the alphabet is capital T. Now in the palmar notation system. So the palmar notation system, the alphabets for all the maxillary and the mandibular second molars, they are the same. And the alphabet is E. So E is the alphabet that is used for the mandibular second deciduous molars, the capital E. The only difference is this symbol. So this symbol, it indicates that the tooth, it is of the mandibular arch and it is of the left quadrant. For the right quadrant, this is the symbol. And this symbol, it indicates that it is the tooth, it is of the mandibular arch and it is of the right quadrant. So in the palmar notation system, the alphabets, they are the same. The only difference is this symbol. Now in the FDI notation system, the FDI notation system is also known as the two-digit system. So in the FDI notation system, the, the number of this tooth for the left mandibular second molar is 75 and for the right it is 85. Now, here, the 7 mean the tooth, it is of the mandibular left quadrant, while the 8 means that the tooth is of the mandibular right quadrant. 5, it indicates the tooth number. So here, the 5 indicates the tooth number. So the number is 75 for the left mandibular second molar and 85 for the right mandibular second molar. Now, from the buccal aspect, uh, the, what are the key identification features? So from the buccal aspect, there are three cusps, one, two, and three cusps. And mesiodistally, these all cusps, they are equal in size, nearly equal in size. So now what are the names of these cusps? So this first cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp. This cusp is the buccal cusp and this cusp is the distobuccal cusp. Now, in between these three cusps, there are two developmental grooves. So here there's a developmental groove and that groove is known as the mesiobuccal developmental groove. Another groove, it is between the buccal and the distobuccal cusp over here. And this is known as the distobuccal developmental groove. In the root, there is a bifurcation. 
below the cemento enamel junction. So the root trunk, it is very small and there's a bifurcation and there are two roots. This is the mesial root and this is the distal root. The roots, they are cylinder and they are quite long as compared to the crown length. In the middle third and in the apical third portion, the roots, they are quite flare. Uh, like they are quite divergent in the middle and in the apical third region. From the lingual aspect, there are two cusps. So on the buccal aspect, there are there were three cusps. So there are two cusps and these two cusps, they are also equal in dimensions. This cusp is the mesial lingual cusp. And this is the distolingual cusp. In between these mesial lingual and the distolingual cusp, there is a short lingual groove that is present in between these two cusps. This is the cervical line from mesial to the distal side, and this cervical line it is nearly straight. Portion of the each cusp, mesial buccal, buccal and the distal buccal cusp, they are visible from the lingual aspect. So from the mesial aspect, the crest of contour, this is a crest of contour on the buccal side. It is very prominent like the mandibular deciduous first molar in the cervical third, near the cervical third region. This is the lingual cusp, mesial lingual cusp, and it is long and higher Mesio as compared to the mesiobactyl cusp. This is a cervical line and it is regular and it is nearly straight. This is a mesial root and it is quite broad buccolingually and it is flat and it terminates in a blunt apex. So this is the apex of, of the root. So the buccolingual width the buccolingual width of the crown, it is less on the distal side as compared to the mesial side. This is the distolingual cusp and it appears more well developed as compared to the distal buccal cusp. This is the distal marginal ridge and this ridge it is short and there is a dip over here. Like the mesial side, the cervical line uh, is nearly straight and regular. So the buccolingual width of the root, it is less on the distal side, especially in the apical area. The taper of the root, it is more. And because of this taper and the less buccolingual width, part of the mesial root, it is also visible from the distal aspect. So from the occlusal aspect, there are three cusps. This is the mesiobuccal, this is the buccal cusp, and this is the distobuccal cusp. So these are the three cusps on the buccal side, and they are nearly similar in size. There are two lingual cusps. This is the mesiolingual, and this is the distolingual cusp. So the crown, it tapers towards the lingual side, so the mesial distal width on the lingual side, it is relatively less as compared to the mesial distal width of the crown on the buccal side. Overall, this tooth, it looks quite similar with the permanent mandibular first molar, and this is a very important point. But the size of the deciduous tooth, it is less. And the cusp of the deciduous smallers, they are e nearly equal in size, unlike the permanent mandibular first smaller. So in summary, uh, the, the shape of this tooth or the morphology is similar to the mandibular permanent first smaller. This is the central developmental groove. And this central developmental groove, it follows a staggered pattern or a zigzag pattern. Tip of the mesial triangular fossa to the distal triangular fossa. So it travels.
um, this uh, central developmental groove, mesiobuccal developmental groove, distobuccal developmental groove, lingual developmental groove, and some accessory grooves or the supplementary grooves, they also emerge. Now, there are two triangular fossa. This is the distal triangular fossa and this is the mesial triangular fossa. So, the distal triangular fossa, it is not as well defined as the mesial triangular fossa, which is quite well developed. But this is the central pit. So, uh, this is all about the deciduous mandibular second molar. And thank you very much for watching this lecture. Do subscribe to our channel and visit our Instagram account for a dental edu hub for questions, images, and flashcards. Thank you very much for your support. Please write your feedback in the comments below.